All right, congratulations, you've made it to this final video. Let's add a little bit of polish as we finish off this project. I'm here on the finished project here, and as I scroll, you'll notice that things just pop in as they enter into the viewport. We're gonna use intersection observers, which we've used before with the slider, to access anything with this class of fade up, and then to add that effect to it. But to start with, we actually need the class ready and available. We're gonna use another way of adding customizations to Tailwind. We're gonna use something called plugins. Now these plugins extend Tailwind, and as you can see, you can add a bunch of third-party plugins, whatever you want. But to start with, what we're going to do is just use some of these built-in plugins in Tailwind. So I'm going to come up top here, just uh, below that type import, and we'll add that require statement. And then here are a bunch of different functions that you can access. What we're going to do is we're going to add our own utilities. Now we could add these in the CSS like we did last time, but again, I'm just trying to show you different ways you can do this. So I'm going to come down here below, and I already have a plugins array. So I'm just going to type plugin, and I'm just mimicking over here what you see in the docs. Now we can make this an arrow function, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to pull in two items. I'll just destructure them here. We want add utilities, and I also want the theme function. And again, I'm going to write this as an arrow function. And now I can call that add utilities, and inside here, I'll go ahead and just provide two different classes. And I'll do this essentially by passing in different properties on this object. So the first one in quotation marks here will be fade up. And then this object will hold any CSS properties. So I'll write transition, and I'll just paste in some transition properties here on the transform and on the opacity. And again, these are just written in standard CSS. I also then will want to access the opacity. Now Tailwind has these functions available to me, so I'll go ahead and just pull those in from the theme, and I can just do opacity.0. So in other words, that's the same as writing opacity-0 in a Tailwind class. And then finally, I want to transform. And in this case, what I want to do is translate 3D, which essentially engages the GPU, so it, it's a little bit more performant. So that's why I'm doing it this way, and we'll just do zero. So in other words, what I'm saying is, by default, if something has a fading class, I want it to be two rim down of where it normally would be. All right, so that's one of the classes we've added. Let's add one more, and I'll just hold Option and the Shift key to drag that down, and we'll call this class Faded. Now here, I don't need any kind of transition property. I do want opacity, but I actually want it to be back to full opacity, and then I just want to move this back to zero. So everything will start with a fade up class, and then everything will end with having faded applied to it as well. So that's all the customization I need to do. Let me actually move over to my HTML now. All right, and the header section will actually not be fading at all, so let's move down to the next section. And essentially on each of these sections, this is where I want to add fade up. And you can see here that extension is already showing me the custom class I just created with that plugin. Let's add this as well on this section. So each of the sections will kind of slide up together. And then this isn't strictly a section. It's what holds our slide container. But because it essentially acts as its own little section, let's add that there as well. Let me collapse this. And then in this section, we actually don't want to fade this up because you might remember that this flex wraps right here. So sometimes the map will be above the other section and depending on the screen size, sometimes it won't. So let's actually add it on both of these sub items, these children, and then I'll collapse this section. And then finally, let's add it to the CTA. Okay, so if we did all that correctly, I should be able to come over here and everything will be two rem lower than it otherwise would be and totally invisible. Everything is invisible until we get to the footer. Perfect, okay. So we actually want to, to fade that in. So how do we do that? Well, let's jump over to our main JS and we're gonna write one other section of JavaScript. And again, you would probably split these out, but just for simplicity, I'm gonna keep everything in the same file. So let's call this section of our JavaScript like fade up observer, just like that. All right, then just like before, we need to write a new intersection observer. I'm just gonna attach this to the variable fade up observer. You can call this whatever you want. And then I'll say new intersection uh, observer. Now you might remember this takes a callback and it takes options. We'll get back to that in a second. But for now, what I want to do is actually access anything with that fade up class. And probably the easiest thing to do is just to write it right here. So document.query selector all. And what I want to do is select anything with the dot fade up class. And then for each of those items, so I'll grab them and we'll just call them items. That works. Uh, then I'm going to pass this through this arrow function to my fade up observer. And then remember, there's a method that lives on that called dot observe. And I'll pass it that individual item. So now each of these things should be being passed to the fade up observer. Now if I save this, I should get an error because, of course, callback is not a function. But let's go ahead and keep writing it so that we can kind of see this live with that console pulled up. 
So for now, let's go ahead. Uh, last time we kept this all in line. This time let's split it out. Just mix it up a bit. So this function, let's write, we'll call it fade up observer callback. And you can of course write this as a function expression or an arrow function. I'll just use a normal function here. And let's bring in the, let's call them L's to watch. So just the elements that are being passed in. And then for now, I'll just console.log the L's to watch. And we need to make sure that this is right here. Now, when it comes to our options, let's do the same thing. We'll call this fade up observer options. No reason to get real inventive with these names. <laughs> let's come up here and let's just add this as a constant. And right now this will be nothing. All right, so now I'm getting all six of these showing. And you might remember that intersection observers are going to fire once as soon as the page loads. And then every time that element moves in or out of the viewport. So as I start to scroll, we should get more fired. And there they go. They start firing as things enter. And as things leave, they'll fire again. So let's grab each of those L's to watch. So we'll say L's to watch dot for each of them. We'll just call it an L. So an element that gets passed in. You can call that whatever you want. This time we're going to console.log L dot is intersecting. Last time I showed you how this is a property that lives on each of these intersection observer entries. So if I save it, you see they're all false. As one enters, it will sw switch to true. And then other ones will switch to true. And then eventually those ones that first came on will go back to false. So they're going to just keep firing. And every time I scroll, they'll just keep working the whole time in the background. So what I want to know is if it is intersecting, then I want to do something. So let's change this to an if statement. And what do I want to do? Well, what I want to do is grab the element that's being passed in. So not the intersection observer, but the actual element. Well, how do I get access to that? Well, if I come back in here, we console.log one more time the L that's been passed in, and I start to scroll. Once it's intersecting, the first one will jump in here. I do have is intersecting. That's interesting to know, but I also actually want access to the element itself. And I've got that here in a target, just like a lot of different event listeners, you'll have e.target or event.target. That's what I've got here. So target is one of those properties. So let's come in here. And what I want is my L then dot target dot class list dot add, and I want to add my class of faded. So now let's go ahead and save that. And now as soon as the first one is intersecting with the viewport, it should add that class of faded. And there it is, it scrolls right in. And then as I go, they continue to happen. Cool. Now you might think that's we're done. The only problem is here, it's still working in the background and there's no reason for it to be doing more work. And just to prove that to you, I'll come down here and say console.log, still working. All right, so initially there should be six and there are. And then if all of them scroll on, there should be 12 but I don't want them to keep working after they scroll on. So if I come in here, they add, they add, and then if I keep scrolling, notice this is just happening constantly. <laughs> Do you want 79, 84 of these things going on? Uh, I don't think so. So how can we get rid of this intersection observer once we've added that class? Well, it's actually not too difficult, just inside of here, after it's intersected and added that class of faded, we can say fade up observer, so we can just call that again, and then we'll say dot unobserve, and this time, what do we want to unobserve? Well, the exact element that is being passed in, which again is L.target. So I'll go ahead and save that, and then here we go. So now it should come in and then be gone. Let me put back my console log, and there we go, it's still working. Let's scroll, and then once we hit to 12, it should not be working anymore because they're already all in. Now, the reason I'm saying 12 is because they'll start as false and then switch to true. So everything will be triggered twice, but nothing more after that. Now, if you want, you can go an additional step on top of this, and that is you can actually remove those classes. So if you want, you can go one additional step and actually remove those classes if you want. So for instance, I could come in here, let's see, inside this if statement, and I could add an event listener for each of these targets as well. So l.target.add event listener, and listen for the transition end. And then let's write this as an arrow function inside of here. We'll say l.target.classList.remove, and I can remove multiple classes here of fade up and I could remove the class of faded, which puts everything back to normal as if we never did this in the first place. Now, just like you have to basically tell your fade up observer to stop observing, you also need to tell this transition end that, hey, you don't need to keep doing this for time and eternity. And you can do that by passing in an optional object here for the event listener. You can do this for any event listener, but you just say once colon true. So it will only happen one time and then stop listening after that. All right, finally, let's control exactly when this occurs, because right now, as soon as any of it's in the viewport, it starts to scroll in. However, I don't really get the full effect if I only see this little bit. So let's actually add something to these options right here. Last time we used the threshold, let's just use that again. So we'll say threshold here, and we can just say 0.6. So when 60% of it is in the viewport, only then consider it truly as being in the viewport. 
So if I come back over here and I start to scroll, once 60% of it's in, then the whole thing will slide in. And there I get a much more full effect. Same thing for all of these. Hey, well, if you've followed me through this entire project, please leave a comment below just to let me know, to let Sean know. I'd love to see how this was a help to you. It was a fun project because we had some interesting UX, UI challenges. We got some interesting CSS we got to work with. And overall, the effect looks pretty professional when you finish the whole thing up. If you have additional suggestions for how we can make this better, I'd love to hear them. You can, of course, add a comment or you can go ahead and leave an issue or do a pull request on the community improvements branch in the GitHub. Well, until next time, thanks so much for watching. Happy coding.